It's with great honor that we have Lori Orlov, the top analyst in the longevity market, to talk about her latest research and findings. So over to Lori. All right, I'm here today to talk to you about um, the future of AI and older adults, which is a report I wrote in 2023 that is about that topic. I was pretty excited about the possibilities and today I'm gonna to tell you that I'm even more excited now. Uh, what I wanna start off with is for those people who think that AI is in the future, which uh, frankly, at the time I wrote that report, I did think that was the case. I'd say now the AI future is here. Uh, this is 2024. There are 8.4 billion devices powered by AI today. 55% of all companies have invested in AI, and I believe that number uh, is low and uh, will be re-estimated shortly. Chatbots, machine learning, conversational AI, all of these things have in fact become enablers in the world of business, in the world of communication, uh, sharing information with uh, people who may not have access to a healthcare provider and need information, the scarcity of workers was an initial, one of the many initial drivers of the interest in AI, but there are so many benefits today from machine learning and generative AI and conversational queries and much, much more. So I just want to position this topic in the midst of the ecosystem of, of the older adult technology market. This slide shows that um, the market, in, at least in my perspective, is structured into sort of four major categories communication and engagement of older adults, uh, safety and security of um, older adults, uh, health and wellness, uh, and all the capabilities that exist today to help keep us active, aging, and successfully, and learning and contribution, which are all the ways in which we uh, attempt to leave a legacy of information for our families, learn new skills, help other people learning new skills, and as you know, uh, continue working. At least 20% of the 65 plus population today is working and many are volunteering and all are benefiting from the role of uh, fintech. But AI sits in the center of this uh, technology ecosystem um, because it, it is capable of powering smart cameras, motion sensors, voice technology, and software. And if you look at all of the apps that you start up today, you're going to see a microphone on most of those, and that is the voice capability of interacting with your software without actually touching a screen or manipulating it. So it's pretty much in every device and every application. Uh, sometimes it's embedded and you can't see it. Sometimes it is um, overt and explicit like conversational AI. So what is artificial intelligence? Well, it has three main functions as far as the older adult uh, landscape. It, um, it is, uh, exists, and I would say its number one capability that can help older adults is, it, is its predictive capability. It can help predict fall risk. It can help identify prevention techniques for avoiding fall risk, and it can help detect issues, health issues, before they've necessarily been diagnosed by a medical professional. So how does it do that? It does that by learning. Uh, it recognizes patterns in what it has learned, which is built on an enormous amount of data, some of which has been the original training data, but much of it is now new data sets associated with various categories of care and health. And it has a capability of doing the most important thing, which is detecting patterns. And with those patterns, um, it applies algorithms, and the algorithms are um, what is used to help us um, gain the benefit. And if you haven't installed a tool like ChatGPT to try it out, you might want to try it and ask it questions about various uh, well-known health issues and what it suggests that one should do about it. Um, and I think you'll find that uh, it's been trained on a lot of very useful data. So this slide um, I built, I, I used in, a, in, a, in, a, in one of my reports, um, it implies a level of integration about the future uh, between all these capabilities, whether it's wearable sensors or activity detection or environmental monitoring and so forth. It looks like we've somehow linked all these things together to make us safer in our home. Unfortunately, there are hardly any of them linked together. 
There are a few companies that in fact are trying to provide more of a suite of uh, software to harness all this information. But a lot of it is hidden inside home security systems or health applications or fall detection. And uh, it, it, like I said, it looks a lot more coordinated than it is. Hopefully as we look out into the future, it will become more coordinated. Um, and uh, that is going to be very important to us as we um, age into our later years. So one of the high potential futures uh, for AI and older adults will be AI powered home robotics uh, that can do tasks that we need to have done for older adults. And in fact, uh, especially those who are living alone or are disabled, the MIT Technology Review for May 2024 had a nice long article about the um, evolving role of robots that are learning how to do tasks like folding laundry and wiping surfaces or unloading baskets. And the various university robotics programs, whether it's MIT or Stanford or other places, they're teaching the robots how to do these things. And the robots are uh, pretty quick at picking up the skill, for example, of how to tear off a paper towel. You can imagine how useful that may be in our future, especially as they get into a price point that we will all be able to hopefully afford at some point. So one of the main thoughts these days about the role of AI is what it can do in terms of healthcare. And I can tell you right now, um, I asked recently um, one of these software programs for some advice on how to help a stiff back. And I was given 10 valid exercises and that I already knew about, uh, whether it's bridges or wall sits or knee to chest exercises or whatever. Uh, it gave me 10 exercises that are completely appropriate for dealing with a stiff back. Um, I thought that was useful uh, because in fact, um, uh, when you think about that one simple question, and then the fact that you could ask a, a follow-up question and say, well, what if I've just had a knee replacement? Or what if I've just had a hip replacement? Or what if, what if, what if, what if? And the what ifs are the things you can follow on and ask a conversational AI offering, which can be very helpful for people who may have not yet discussed a problem with the doctor, may not be able to schedule an appointment with the doctor or whatever it happens to be. It's also turning out to be very useful in diagnostics and uh, people are matching its diagnostic capability with that of actual physicians. And it's turning out to be very good, also very good at clinical decision support. And so you can imagine a situation I'm sure um, doctors are imagining a situation in which they're uh, trying to figure out a diagnosis. They're in the exam room and they would like to get an answer to a question before they proceed. And then care delivery. This is one of our great potentials for AI that I don't think has yet been fully realized. But uh, if you think about care delivery, we could have a lot more assistance helping us do, for example, self-care. That is, what do we need to do to mitigate an issue we might have, a physical issue, a health issue, a concern we have, um, what can we do? And is that information match what an actual care provider would offer? Uh, not to say that one should avoid care providers, but these days it's becoming somewhat difficult to schedule care providers. And so at least a little bit of information could be provided and then could be verified with other sources. Uh, chronic care management may also be an opportunity where in fact, um, it can help a person, uh, the, one of the examples in that MIT article is a person who is fully disabled and how could it help him uh, cope with his disability uh, even though he in fact cannot get up and move and, and in fact cannot talk. Um, so that's where we are in terms of uh, today and the future in all of these categories, the future is uh, pretty exciting. And we have to unfortunately wait to stay tuned and see what's gonna happen. Uh, one of the reports I wrote about the future of care work um, included a study, I think it was Eric Topol who published the study, and the study demonstrated that a chatbot could have more empathy or time for answering questions than a physician. And uh, in fact, you could probably figure that out yourself by uh, asking a series of follow-on questions to whether it is Bing Chat or ChatGPT or whatever. You can ask a series of follow-on questions and it will answer the follow-on questions um, you might not have thought of those follow-on questions while you're sitting in an exam room with a doctor, but you can think about them on your own time and uh, ask questions. And apparently in the measurement of uh, empathy, um, the doctor uh, was less empathetic, I guess, than the chatbot. Um, now, I think that's in some ways a little bit 
uh, silly, um, but it makes a point, which is you can have a long conversation with a chatbot that's very difficult in some circumstances to have with a doctor. Where are we today with the use of AI in older adults? Well, we are at a stage now where we already have AI-enabled cameras that can detect and predict falls. Um, we uh, have the ability to do gait analysis with AI technology, which is to indicate whether in fact we are slowing down or exhibiting uh, a problem with walking. Um, we have the ability uh, to use predictive modeling, uh, as I said, not only to um, get insights into possible health related issues, but also to use predictive modeling to improve efficiency of staff and delivering care uh, to older adults. And that is already being looked at. In fact, there was an article in Senior Housing News about it um, this past week. Hearing assistance technology is enabled these days by AI that helps separate speech from noise. So people who have hearing aids can focus on a conversation and um, tune out the noise. We have the ability today to do tech training of older adults using um, chatbots and uh, AI technology. And I believe that is gonna be increasingly useful um, for people who cannot get to a class, uh, may not have um, uh, all, our, all their questions answered when looking at an online video uh, training program. And they can ask follow on questions like, how do you do this? How do you do that? Uh, this is very key. Uh, to our ability to um, get the greatest value from technology is to be able to say, but how do you do? Uh, the last uh, point on this slide is about um, concierge uh, care, uh, chatbot-based concierge care. And that already is being done by a couple of uh, companies. And you might see concierge services offered, which in fact uh, have chatbots on a screen. And in a senior living facility, you could actually request a ride or sign yourself up for an activity that involves getting on a bus or whatever. They've also been doing um, analysis of audio interviews with residents that helps drive a calendar of events for them. This is the same Senior Housing News article this past week about what you could do with machine learning. Uh, you, can, um, you can look at what people are interested in, not just by, based on what they touch on a screen, but based on asking them about what they're interested in and that could enable the delivery of a calendar of events that are appropriate for them. That could work with senior living, or it could work um, at home with a suggested set of activities that would improve quality of life. So where is all of this market um, headed? And I think it's important, we can forget about where it is now, that's where it is now, <laughs> uh, but it's moving fast. And we're already in a situation that our access to information is enabled uh, and improved with AI chatbots. We're already in a situation where having a single query or a single interaction with someone when one is isolated and alone can be replaced by a conversational interaction that has multiple uh, respond and converse capabilities in it. We have voice first technology today that has in the past few years been isolated to smart speakers and voice assistants, but that's over. Now it's part, those are part of multi-modes of interacting, which includes on a smartphone, um, or any capability that you can see today on the internet that has a microphone on the screen. In terms of health technology, we already have a situation where patient data is still locked up in care silos. Uh, one of the uses of AI that is probably not yet realized is that uh, AI tools can enable patient data to span the care continuum. Uh, we've never been able to do that before with a whole, without a whole lot of integration software. But moving forward, I believe we're going to be able to access data from point A in the care continuum and uh, retain it and use it uh, in a subsequent point. How that actually will work, um, I haven't got the solution for that just yet. Caregiver technology. We already have a situation where AI is helpful at assisting care workers. And in fact, it can be useful uh, to, be, to use a camera capability and do check-in of residents who live down long hallways. Uh, but you can also, uh, aside from assisting care workers, you can supplement in-home monitoring uh, that is potentially done by people or done by sensors. You can supplement that by um, asking a few questions. Uh, the technology can ask a few questions, make a few suggestions, and potentially identify whether you need to get help. We have a situation today with remote monitoring where um, we have ability to do all kinds of pattern recognition 
But in the future, what we're going to be able to do uh, is um, we're going to help family members deal with the care of their family members. Um, and especially for solo agers, this is going to be very useful. You want a technology watching out for you if you live alone that can predict changes in your behavior, even without a wearable, and uh, offer up a suggestion as to whether you need some kind of help. So just to sum this up a little bit, what I've talked about is the role of AI today that is a combination of conversational, we'll be able to ask and get questions answered and have a discussion almost with uh, an intelligence that understands what it is we're saying. It's going to be predictive, that is a data that is collected, whether it's all the data that's in the world or whether just data from our particular healthcare providers, it will be predictive of possible issues we may have with our health. It's going to provide support for professionals, already is doing so, will provide more support for professionals no matter what category they're in, because it'll either be automating tasks that they don't want to do or uh, giving them assistance in answering questions related to the tasks they must do. It will help provide assistance at home for people who live alone or people who are caring for uh, older adults, uh, whether it's a question of answering and giving advice um, or uh, answering questions without ads, whatever it happens to be, we'll be able to get information by asking and getting an answer. So um, this is all related to reports that I've published about AI and the future of care work, AI and older adults, uh, the state of voice in AI and older adults I put out in 2022. And I'm going to do another report called um, the tech user experience needs an upgrade which will also mention the role of AI in providing that upgrade. So I wanna thank you very much. Lori, that was a brilliant coach and, and clear analysis of the state of the art of AI and looking to the future. No one does it better. So thank you so much for being with us.